Okay, today we're going to talk about importing custom textures and text as well as the projection tool so we can put that so we can project it onto our object. So I'm super excited about that. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we want to do is come down here to import resources. We're going to add resources and substance. Okay, so I'm going to choose Grenade Alpha, Grenade Words, and uh, Grenade Words Large. So in Photoshop, I created the text and I put it over the UV so it's angled correctly in Grenade Words. So you can just basically apply it as you would in Photoshop. I also did a little bit more customization by uh, bringing this, centering it, and putting it in. There's a little bit of distortion, which won't look, won't look accurate, but it'll work for today's purposes as well as we can import Photoshop files. So I created an alpha or a black and white map um, like this. Okay, so I'm gonna open and then it's gonna list all three here and we still can't import. Before you can import, you need to actually define what these are so they're organized and categorized. So under here, we have alpha, environment, texture, and color lot. We're gonna choose alpha for the alpha and the other two, I'm gonna choose texture and texture. Now we still can't import because we have to import your resources too. So what we're gonna do here is click, we can choose current session, project, or shelf. Current session means it'll work while this, while this substance painter is open. Once we close it and if we reload this project, all of those will be gone. We can save them to the project, so if we close substance painter, open it and load the project, these textures will be there, but if we start a new project, they'll be gone. And then we have shelf, which permanently attaches it to Substance Painter's library. So for this purpose, I'm gonna choose current session and I'm gonna import. Okay, so now we got all three and you can see the Photoshop version was converted and is available. Okay, so we have multiple different ways to do this. We can actually just do a texture by creating a like just a standard layer, or we can use a non-destructive uh, uh, destruct, mode, uh, which will be a fill layer, and I'll show you that after. So first, I'm going to add a layer, and in here, what we can do is I can click on this, and I can actually drag this into my base layer, and we can stamp it in. I can hit uh, projection up here, not polygon fill. I'm sorry, one more above projection and in the projection what I can do is I can um, we can use a where's my stencil okay so here we can click this for our projection base color so there now uh, I've applied it to this but it's if I paint here nothing's gonna happen so what I need to do is align this text since it's on projection uh, and then I can paint in and it'll and it'll come through see so I'm gonna turn all this off except for color so now we shouldn't get any of that other stuff you can see it's there but what we don't want is it to look like this because it's gonna be really hard and I don't want to have to turn it so I actually set this up to line up with the angle of the UVs so if I go to 3d 2d and I rotate this you can see that it lines up with the UVs and now I just need to adjust the size and then I can paint and then I can paint it on so basically and if I rotate here you'll see that it is painting on okay and I can't paint here because it's two different things so I would have to continue to paint this and then I can paint this and there we go that's one way to put this on so I'm going to delete this. The next way that I prefer is using, um, or if you want, I'm sorry, uh, if you want to do a layer, we can actually um, do a, what's a fill layer? Up here, just choose a layer again. And then we can go into our projection mode and then I can choose the big, the big text and drag that in. And that basically does the same thing, but it gives us big text. Um, and like I said, it's distorted for that angle and it's not distorted for here. So it's gonna be a little harder, but what we could do is rotate the, the UVs and then put this in here and then paint. 
we can paint everything on like this, which makes it nice and easy. But as in previous uh, workflows and stuff, this isn't going to work because we want to do this with a non-destructive um, non-destructive manner. So with that, I want to use a fill layer and I want to basically change the color to look like I want it to in here. So I'm going to go ahead and change this yellow. Let's go bright yellow. Let's go a little bit more orange. There we go. Good. And let's do roughness and we can come back and edit this afterwards, which is the nice thing. And then from here, I'm just going to add a black mask. And then editing in the mask, I can actually use the projection tool and I can use this. And this, instead of using the color, it's now an alpha. So I can actually, let's zoom in, let's get this where we want it. And I can actually paint the alpha in, which is super nice. And it, like I said, it's gonna be a little angled and that's not what we want, but I can turn the projection off and now since this is a lettering now I can go back into my base color since it is non destructive and I can change what color I want this to be which is super awesome um, and now when it's like this I can, and it's since it's a mask I can also go in and edit this kind of stuff so I have multiple options um, I can actually uh, create a folder and we can call this lettering mask folder and this is just one option we don't have to do it this way and then what I can do is add a white mask and then I can add a generator and then we can just for this point instead of a mask editor we can use dirt and now yet again procedurally we've destroyed this okay which is super nice um, Another thing that we can also do is if you already have your base and we have all the scratches and stuff, we can actually put this in that hierarchy underneath the scratch folder, underneath the metal edge, and underneath the dirt, and just put it over the base. And now all the stuff we did prior is gonna be overlaid on top of this, okay? Which is nice. So what I wanna do is go back into here, and I just want to edit the roughness on this just so it comes through a little more. There we go. It might not do super well because it's underneath the dirt. So if I bring it above dirt, there we go. And now the roughness will hit. So that is importing and projecting.